Hello girls, uh, here's um, the first screencast. Um, it's going to cover a little bit of chapter one and all of chapter two. Now chapter one is a summary of some of the main themes that we're going to cover throughout the book. The one I wanted you to focus on now is the evolution one, which as we'll see is a theme that unifies all fields of biology. Um, we'll have a particular chapter of course on Darwin and then genetics, which is involved with that as well. Um, all right, now with chapter two, of course this is a chemistry review, things you covered last year or a couple years ago. Um, of course you guys are familiar with these terms. Of course it all starts with particular elements that we have, and then these elements are often combined into particular compounds, which with this example, you may recall, of course, sodium chloride has different properties from either sodium or chlorine. Um, chlorine, a poisonous gas, sodium, this semi-solid uh, metal. And when you combine them, you get something like sodium chloride, an essential nutrient. We're going to focus a lot on what I call the big four, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. As you can see, making up most of living organisms here in this table again, you see a lot of them, or the big four, I mean, making up the main part of organisms. Um, on a weight basis, you can see we're mostly oxygen. And then we have these other elements we need in smaller amounts as well. Deficiencies in some of those can cause problems if you don't have enough iodine causing goiter or plants that don't get enough nitrogen are stunted in their growth. And here's subatomic structure. Not stressed so much again with the new AP curriculum, but you just want to recall um, these main components of, um, of atoms and the nucleus with the neutrons and the protons and the electrons that orbit the um, nucleus. Of course, most of the mass coming from neutrons and protons. The electrons uh, giving elements, uh, giving atoms their bonding properties, as you recall. All right. Okay. So uh, keep in mind the difference, um, what the atomic number is. It's the number of protons. And as, as, as you recall, an element, any given element, they always, atoms of that element always have the same number of protons. Combine protons and neutrons, you get the mass number or atomic mass. And while the number of protons will always be the same for a given element, we know that the number of neutrons can vary. And that gives us our different isotopes. You can have particular atoms that have extra neutrons, these heavy isotopes as they're known. Some of these are radioactive isotopes, that is they're unstable and they can break down and give off uh, energy and such. These isotopes, as you recall, um, perhaps can be used uh, for many things like dating fossils, carbon dating for example, and in biome biomedicine they're used a lot to diagnose, diagnose problems. Um, for example, here, to identify certain cancerous tissues, you can use these um, radioactive isotopes. Energy. So energy is, as we'll see, is going to be an important theme in, uh, in biology because of living organisms, all organisms, organisms make use of energy and process energy. At the atomic level, the energy is really um, uh, the electrons, what we're concerned with because as we'll see, electrons are often moved between atoms to essentially move energy. And you learned about orbitals and how you have different energy levels and electrons can be excited and move between different um, orbitals. The electron configuration um, and the number of electrons you have gives elements their chemical properties and you learned a lot about the periodic table. You see just a certain part of it here with some of the more important um, um, elements for um, <clears throat> living things. And so certain elements have their outer orbital full, and these are not relatively non-reactive 
elements as you learned, and but many of them have um, an outer orbital that's not full, and that makes them reactive. Some are very reactive, like oxygen and fluorine. They really like to grab onto electrons. Others um, only have one, as you see, with lithium and sodium, and they're ones that are willing to often give up that electron. We'll talk a lot about carbon. It has its own chapter, and that outer orbital has four. How many more would it like to have? Four more, right? And so it's a very versatile element, as we'll see, forming all sorts of bonds with various other types of uh, elements. Okay, that outer shell, that valence shell, is what really gives the atoms their uh, particular properties. We're not going to worry about orbitals, but we will focus a little bit on bonding. You'll recall we have covalent bonds and ionic bonds, covalent bonds where they're sharing electrons, two hydrogens for example, and you can get compounds forming or uh, single covalent bonds, double covalent bonds in the, f in, um, the case of oxygen, um, and of course you can get more than two uh, atoms forming a compound. Carbon, again, that very versatile one wanting to form four bonds, here in the case of methane, CH4. Electronegativity, what's that? Well, that's basically how much an atom uh, desires electrons, you might say. So again, things like chlorine and fluorine and oxygen are very electronegative. They like to grab onto electrons, whereas hydrogen and sodium are not electronegative really at all. They're willing to give them up. So with um, water, so this is a um, atom, or I'm sorry, a compound in which you have uh, hydrogen oxygen bonded in these covalent bonds. Overall, this atom doesn't have a charge, but it does have a certain polarity, which gives water its unique properties, where it has a slightly negative side, and a, I'm sorry, a slightly negative side here and a slightly positive side. And as we'll see, that's what allows water molecules to stick to each other and what allows other uh, molecules to stick to water and makes water a good solvent. Now, you have some um, elements that bond together in ionic bonds where one atom is taking electrons from the other and they're forming electron, I'm sorry, forming ions. Anions, negative ions, cations, positive ions. And the classic example is when sodium and chlorine bond. Chlorine, that very electronegative atom, takes an electron from sodium, which only has one in its outer orbital, so it's willing to give it up. And so they form ions, and the opposite charge is what holds them together. There you go. Salts, good examples of ionic compounds. Weak chemical bonds, hydrogen bonds, so that polarity we see in water, that slightly negative side and, side and slightly positive side is what allows two water molecules to stick together. Those slight variations in charge form those hydrogen bonds. Um, and again, makes water a good solvent, so things like ammonia can be dissolved in it. Van der Waals interactions, what allows the gecko to walk up walls, where just the slight variation in the electron orbitals forms a charge that allows um, that gecko to stick to a wall or a glass surface or something like that. Very weak bond, but when you have a lot of them happening on the toe pads here, it can allow that animal to stick to the wall. Uh, bonding of um, atoms gives more compounds particular shapes, and that shape is very important for how that um, that molecule does its thing. For example, here we see two different compounds, morphine, which is extracted from uh, poppy plants, which is a painkiller, a natural painkiller. And then you have some others found in us that, again, have that same active site, which gives it comparable, com uh, comparable properties. Um, so the shape of molecules, extremely important. Chemical reactions, we know that uh, particular atoms and elements and compounds will react with each other, um, forming particular products. And we're going to talk about some really important um, chemical reactions, photosynthesis, for example, 
and uh, the counterpart to that cellular respiration where we'll see we take these relatively simple compounds like carbon dioxide and water and plants can turn them into glucose and oxygen very important um let's see okay well that's about it for this uh, introduction chapter one um thank you see you in class <laughs>